what is up everyone welcome back to another video today we're going to be checking out how the netherlands helps other countries with their water problem oh water problem in in some countries is a problem so it's nice that the netherlands actually help people with water so let's see how they actually come across to do this so if that is something you're interested in guys let's watch this together so stay till the end guys and let's get right onto it and find out in march of 2021 a significant portion of global trade came to a halt when a cargo ship became stuck in the suez canal oh egypt was unsuccessful in getting the ship out alone they needed help yeah but it wasn't the united states china russia or any other large or what would be considered a powerful nation or companies within them that would come to the rescue. An offer from the US Navy to send dredging experts was accepted by Egypt, but this offer would become irrelevant. It was the Netherlands that saved the day. One right. powerful tugboat from the Netherlands That's nice. and a second from Italy that was chartered by a Dutch company pulled the cargo ship out. A Dutch company, Royal Boscalis Westminster, led the operation. It may surprise many that this small nation would be the one to come to the rescue. It does but surprise this story me, to really be isn't all that Whoa, unique look at as the far size as help of from that. the Netherlands goes. That is this was huge just one ship. of the rare occurrences that the Netherlands actually received international attention for its inhabitants' unique abilities. The Netherlands wow. is, in both the past and present, a master in both water management and trade, though in some ways they are connected in the Netherlands. To oversimplify, this is due to the Netherlands' geography. It's one of, if not the most flood-prone country in the world, wow. or at least it would be if it wasn't for all of the innovative water management techniques that the country has come up with in order to survive. At the same time, because of its subpar geography, the country looked to the seas in order to prosper, eventually creating the largest company that ever existed, the Dutch East India Company, also known as the VOC. The VOC is long gone, but the Netherlands still plays a large role in international trade. In fact, they have the largest port in all of Europe, Rotterdam. Much yep. of the imports are re-exported directly. Look at how or amazing everything value. is. The ship stuck so in the organized. Suez Canal was actually headed to the port of Rotterdam. Okay. Its history of water problems that forced the country to develop water management skills and a knack for trade has predictably resulted in the country exporting skills related to large-scale water problems. Let's look at some more examples. We'll start with Egypt. Okay. The Suez Canal blockage was not the first time the Netherlands had provided their water-related services to Egypt. That same company, Boscalis, that led the operation, had actually helped to widen the canal in 2014 and 2015. But the help goes back even further. Egypt requested Dutch expertise for its need to implement subsurface drainage on all agricultural land after the completion of the Aswan High Dam in 1970, which sparked the creation of what is called the Water Panel, where experts from both countries exchange ideas related to water. This panel still meets twice a year. In recent years, the panel has been researching and discussing ways Egypt can expand their agriculture and aquaculture using brackish water from underground aquifers, which approximately 55% of Egypt's area has access to. The Netherlands lies extremely low in elevation. It's basically one giant river delta. And with sea levels rising, the Netherlands has and will continue to be faced with rising salinity levels, which gives them experience in dealing with the issue and the motive to continue research and developing innovative methods of combating the problem, which can be used in other countries such as Egypt. In 2014, a Dutch team developed a potato through traditional breeding methods that is tolerant to salt water. Their okay. project beat more than 500 competitors from wow. 90 countries With to win salt an award sponsored that by is, the U.S. Agency for International that is something. Development. For Egypt, better utilizing its brackish water for things such as farming salt-tolerant crops okay. or shrimp farms may soon be a necessity. Egypt faces fresh water supply issues due to a quickly rising population, yep. which is stretching the limits of their main water source the Nile River. Nile Egypt River. also believes that a newly built dam in Ethiopia on the Blue Nile, one of the two major tributaries of the Nile, could decrease the amount of water what? available. And as How? of now, 84% of Egypt's fresh water is used for agriculture. So using the brackish water for agriculture will certainly ease some of that strain. Now let's look at some projects in my country, the United States. In August of 2005, a destructive Category 5 hurricane mm -hmm. named Katrina hit the city of New Orleans and the surrounding areas. 
Though it weakened to a category three by no landfall, way. it still resulted in 1,800 fatalities and $125 billion in damage. Oh, damn. The city of that New Orleans has many geographic similarities crazy. as the country of the Netherlands. It's a coastal city that sits low in elevation and on a river delta. Much of the city is actually below sea level. The city did have methods to prevent catastrophic flooding in 2005, but they were ineffective. The Dutch offered their assistance, and on September 7th, the U.S. government announced that it would accept the Dutch government's offer to send water pumps to deliver clean drinking water, five water management experts, and F-16s with sophisticated infrared cameras to look for weaknesses in the city's levees. The Netherlands helped continued well after the disaster through the company Arcadis, a design and engineering firm with expertise in water management and flood protection. Okay. Arcadis has worked on numerous projects for the city <laughs> of New Orleans, including what you see here. It's called the West Closure Complex which is the largest drainage pump station in the nation. I've heard about this one the before. The facility has 11 specially designed pumps, each powered by a 5,400 horsepower diesel engine, each wow. weighing 70 tons. The volume of water moved Crazy, by one of these right? pumps could fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool in less than five seconds, providing mm. a significant first line of defense against hurricane storm surges. Hurricane Katrina also sparked a series of public meetings, focus groups, and consulting sessions that have taken place between civic leaders, stakeholders, and flooding experts from the U.S. and Netherlands, named the Dutch Dialogues. They began in New Orleans and now take place in other U.S. cities with water challenges, such as Norfolk, Virginia, and Charleston, South Carolina. These meetings in New Orleans sparked a proposed redesign of the city by a U.S. company called Wagner & Ball which had not worked with water management before Katrina, but now its founder, David Wagner, and his firm are known for it. When the Dutch came to New Orleans, Wagner said that many of the Dutch asked, if this is a water city, where's the water? New Orleans has historically tried to hide the water underground versus a Dutch city where you can see the water all around. Some believed that New Orleans was denying the fact that it was a Delta city and it must embrace the water as part of the solution. Purely attempting to hold the water back was clearly not working. Wagner's firm, along with others from the Dutch Dialogues, formed a design team of more than 25 engineers, urban designers, landscape architects, city planners, and soil and hydrology experts from both the Netherlands and Louisiana. I see. The team dedicated two years to developing what is called the Greater New Orleans Urban Water Plan, which is designed to be implemented over the course of 50 years. Ooh, In 2015, that's a long period. it won the American Planning Association's National Planning Excellence Award for environmental planning. Now let's take a look at another U.S. city. This city used to belong to the Dutch. What city is this? It was once this? called New Amsterdam, but today, New, Amsterdam. New York City. New York City. Talks of improving New York's flood defenses wow. were already underway, but in October of 2012, Hurricane Sandy hit the city of New York, resulting in $19 billion in damage and Ooh. 43 deaths in the city. This hurricane ignited a sense That's of That's just horrible. New York City needed better protection. Just Five horrible, different options guys. were proposed, one of which included a swinging gate barrier similar to one in the Netherlands that would have stretched from Sandy Hook to Breezy Point, but at the cost of $119 billion oh, and the chance that it would quickly become obsolete due to rising sea levels. It was decided that other smaller and less costly projects were the best option for the city. This includes a $5 to $10 billion project in Lower Manhattan, which was partially designed once again by Arcadis. The firm's design includes extending Lower Manhattan's shoreline up to 500 feet, or two full city blocks, and elevating the shoreline to be 20 feet or more above sea level. It's fitting that the Dutch company's focus is in Lower Manhattan, which was where New Amsterdam, the seat of government of the Dutch colony of New Netherland, was actually located. But the Dutch don't just prevent floods. They create land in the water where there is none, or had once been taken by the sea. And these practices are spreading to other countries as well. One of these projects is currently taking place in Singapore. These pieces of reclaimed land are called polders. They are created by first building dikes around a wetland. Water is then pumped out of the center. Historically, this was done with windmills. Today, this is done with electric pumps. Reeds are then sown. Today, this is done by aircraft. This helps the soil form. After three years, reeds are burnt and the ashes used as fertilizers for the soil. After a period of up to 15 years, the polder is ready for growing crops, building houses, and constructing roads. Hmm. 
These polders are continually maintained to keep from becoming waterlogged from ground and rainwater. Wow, that's just Water beautiful, is pumped guys. into canals right. or drained off through side gates. Singapore has already been reclaiming land for years, but this method will reduce its reliance on sand. The polder is being implemented at the northwestern end of Pulau Tekong, the Pulau second Tekong. largest of Singapore's outlying islands. A weird its name. is designed against a 1 in 100,000 year wave overtopping, but and that, the polder very will add about though. 1% to Singapore's overall land size. That is there amazing. are hundreds, if not thousands, of other projects large and small, that Dutch citizens have had significant roles in outside of their borders. I asked all of you in a community post for examples. Some of the other countries you mentioned that I haven't talked about so far in this video <coughs> are Ireland, where merchants built much of the city of Cork by reclaiming land from Marshland. The UAE, where Dutch companies constructed the bomb I've seen Island. this before. Russia, where off its coast, a Dutch company salvaged one of its nuclear submarines. Oh. Japan, where a Dutch company supplied fresh drinking water at the 2021 Tokyo Olympics, as they did in five prior Olympics. Okay. The list goes on. Italy, Italy, Bangladesh, Paraguay, Indonesia, Suriname. I wouldn't be surprised if there hasn't been a Dutch water project hmm. conducted in every country in the world. When researching for this video, I found there was often a lot of involvement in water-related projects and graduates from two universities in the Netherlands. One being Delft University of Technology, okay. which is consistently ranked among the top 20 engineering and technology universities in the, in world. the world. In the fields of civil and structural engineering, architecture, and mechanical engineering, they are consistently ranked in the top three in the world. The other That's is Bakken University and Research, which is often ranked as number one in the world in agriculture and forestry and environment and ecology. Many classes, especially advanced degrees, are taught in English which okay. allows information disseminated and taught by these universities to be accessible to a wider audience outside of the Netherlands. I agree. That is, I'm curious that is really and excited good, to see what innovative water practices these Dutch universities and companies produce in the future. Before I wow. end this video, thank you to all who left a comment on the community Wow, post. so that is actually quite impressive what the Netherlands actually have and can do with with water you know they control it so well so well done to them let me know guys if you enjoyed this video don't forget to smash the like button guys subscribe to the channel and if you got any other video recommendations drop it down below guys i'll check that out that being said i think that's it for today's video we'll see you on the next one peace out